It's time now for Jesus is the Answer with Pastor Peter, coming to you from the International Christian Fellowship in Northeast Philadelphia. International Christian Fellowship is a Bible-believing church that preaches the uncompromised Word of God and prays for you and your needs. Pastor Peter is bringing the message of salvation, healing, and deliverance throughout the world. Now, here is Pastor Peter. Hello, praise the Lord, and welcome to Jesus is the Answer. This is Pastor Peter. I'm going to pray for you and your needs. And I believe that our God is going to supply all our needs according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. If you can find the number on the screen, please call and someone will pray for you and your needs. God is doing signs and wonders and miracles. People are calling and getting blessed. So please call and we'll be praying for you. And the end of the program, if there is a chance, I'll pray for you and your needs. We were talking about heaven. We just learned that Jesus Christ will come and he will take us to heaven and he promises and his promises are true. Because Jesus Christ not a man that he can lie. Our God is a true God and he has promises to go to heaven. Now people might be thinking Jesus Christ went to heaven and he's preparing the building and he says when the building is finished when the home new home is finished then I'll come back and some people are thinking 2000 years he's keep on building and is not finished God can finish within a one day he can finish within a one minute he can just say a word and it can be done what Jesus Christ is doing today the Word of God is saying He is our mediator. The, uh, Hebrews chapter 7 verse 25 if you read, He is the one interceding for us. Why He has to do that? Because the Word of God says the devil is a liar, he is a deceiver, he is an accuser of the brother. When we are living in this world, we are born again children of God, we are sold out to Jesus Christ, He comes to discourage us and to make us depressed. There was a one brother, I'm not giving his names, some people might uh, understand as I say. He said, every Sunday I used to go and say, Lord save me and uh, he used to give his life to the Lord every day because each time he goes he gives his life to God and the uh, devil will come and he say, no, you're not born again. You're not saved. So this brother used to go and pray and pray every time. And every time devil used to come and he accuses him that you're not saved. One day he filled with the Holy Spirit and start speaking in tongue and praising God. And the devil came and he said, hey, you didn't fill with the Holy Spirit. Then he got it. He said, devil, you are a liar. When I didn't have the Holy Spirit, that time you didn't come and say you didn't have the Holy Spirit. The day I received the Holy Spirit, that's the time you came and told me that you don't have the Holy Spirit. So that brother says, if devil tells you something lie, that means he got it. He always tells you lie. So I learned something. Same experience came to me. I got saved. I got baptized. And I was waiting for the Holy Spirit. And I said, Lord, if you give me the Holy Spirit, I will be doing your work. It's a long story. If you want to hear my testimony, you can go to the YouTube and listen to Pastor Peter's testimony. But the point I'm making here, when I filled with the Holy Spirit, and I was rejoicing and going, and they hear the devil comes and he says, you don't have the Holy Spirit. And so I was a little bit disappointed, but I just went, and there was a meeting going on. And they invited me to that meeting and I was a little bit late. So everybody were praying and they were closing their eyes and praying. So I took my shoes off and I slowly I went and sat beside the man who was praying. My elbow touched his elbow and that man filled with us in the spirit and he says, somebody is touching me. That man is a man of God filled with the Holy Spirit. He is a so I start thanking God and praising God. The devil was a liar. He was telling me, you don't have the Holy Spirit. Why I'm telling this? Because Jesus Christ is in heaven. He is your advocate. He is your lawyer. 
He is your intercessor and he is pleading your case to God, the Father. And so when the devil comes to accuse you, Jesus, being a lawyer, being an advocate, being our intercessor, he tells the Father, this child is born again. He received me as his or her savior. And they are pleading the blood of Jesus Christ. Because we read in the book of Revelation, the accuser comes to accuse, but they can come, they can overcome by the word of their testimony and the, by, by the blood of Jesus Christ. So that's why when you are born again, you have to tell somebody that you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Book of Romans chapter 10 verse 9 and 10 if you read, you just confess Jesus Christ with your mouth and then believe that God raised him from the dead. That's a testimony telling others. I believe Jesus Christ came from heaven. He died for me. He rose again. He went to heaven. He's going to come back from heaven. And he has shed his blood for me. And now I'm cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. The word of God says in the book of Hebrews chapter 9, Jesus Christ went to heaven. He took his own blood into the heavenly places. And the book of Hebrews chapter 8, if you read, God gave the plan to Moses to how to build the tabernacle. And he says, this is the heavenly pattern I'm giving you. That means there is a real tabernacle or real temple in heaven. And he says, built accordingly on earth as a tabernacle. And they made the temple also, Solomon, just like a tabernacle was. But the point I'm making, real tabernacle or real temple is in heaven. And many people are confused about this because when they read in a book of Revelation chapter 21, they said we do not see the temple in uh, uh, New Jerusalem because God the Father and God the Son is the one who is the temple for us. So the people think the temple disappeared? No, temple did not disappear and will not disappear. Why? Because here we see in Hebrews chapter 9, verses 11 and 12, if you read, you can read the whole chapter 9. It says the blood of Jesus Christ, the precious blood, his own blood, he took it and he went to heaven. And now that blood speaks better than the Abel's blood. You can read that also in a book of Hebrews chapter 12. The point I'm making, Jesus Christ right now is in heaven. He is your and my high priest and he is pleading your case and my case. So he is not just sitting there uh, building, the, uh, uh, building the New Jerusalem. He is a mediator. He is always there. The word of God says, God never sleeps, never slumbers. You remember when they were stoning Stephen and killing them? Jesus Christ stood. The word of God says, word of God says, Stephen says, I see the Son of Man or Son of God standing at the right hand of God. Jesus, we are up to now we studied in the last um, uh, uh, last half an hour that Jesus Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. But the Stephen says he was standing. Why he was standing? Because he was going to welcome Stephen to heaven. So Jesus Christ, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, triune God. They never sleep. They never slumber. They watch over us. And we are living for Jesus Christ. And I was giving an example that when the bride goes up to heaven, there will be marriage supper. Now somebody thinks, once somebody asked me, a little girl, he said, oh, Pastor Peter, uh, when you say you are a bride of Christ and you are a man, how can you be a bride of Christ? And so things like that. So I said, this is spiritual. When St. John chapter 1, he says, as many as received him, Jesus Christ, as their Lord and Savior, to them God the Father gave the authority to be called the sons of God. Then somebody says, how about the girls? Then somebody made the translation, the children of God or the the 
you know, not the sons of God, children means girls and boys. But the original verse is the sons of God. Sons of God is means sonship. To go to heaven, you, are the, you have the authority. So that is for man and woman. The same way the bride of Christ, man and woman, this is just the spiritual message to the people that the intimate relationship we will have with Jesus Christ. So we will be going to heaven. And so when there is a marriage supper means they will be feast in heaven. And this the word of God says and the other people will be invited. Who are those other people? If you go for a wedding, the bride and bridegrooms will be there and the other people comes, those people call friend. They are called the friend of the bridegroom or bride. So we read in St. John chapter 3 verse 29. John the Baptist says, there is a bride and there is a bridegroom. And he says, my joy is fulfilled just listening to the bridegroom's voice. From that, what the John the Baptist is saying? John the Baptist is saying, I am not a bride. I am not even bridegroom. I am just a friend. You remember God said to Abraham, you are my friend. And Jesus called his disciple, you are my friend. Then people say, what is the difference between John the Baptist and Abraham and we are all friends? No, Jesus called us as a friend because at that time he was not even crucified. But after the crucifixion, he calls us the children of God. He calls us the bride of Christ. We are not friend anymore. We can be friend, a child, and a bride. But the Old Testament people cannot say, I am a bride. Because they are all friends. And Jesus Christ gave the example. He said, John the Baptist is the greatest among all the people who are born by woman. But there is someone, least in the kingdom of God, he will be greater than the John the Baptist. Now who is the least in the kingdom of God? Jesus is not least in the kingdom of God. He is the greatest. Then who is the least? As I said earlier, the thief on the cross, he did not preach. He, he didn't take baptism. He was not filled with the Holy Spirit. He did not have crusade. He did not do anything. But he just said, Lord Jesus, remember me in your kingdom. I believe that you are a king. And one day you are going to be a king. Will you remember me in your kingdom? Jesus said, well, today you will be with me in paradise. So that thief on the cross did not do great things, but he will be greater than the John the Baptist. Somebody says, how come? John the Baptist was martyred. He was killed. Why somebody should be greater than him? Let me tell you. John the Baptist or all Old Testament saints, they were washed by the blood of bulls and goats. Read the book of Hebrews chapter 9 and from 11 to 14. You would know the blood of bulls and goats will not sanctify you thoroughly. It does outwardly. But the blood of Jesus Christ washes you inside out to worship the living God. So that is the difference. John the Baptist died before Jesus died because he was not sanctified by the blood of Jesus Christ. So we are blessed people. All the Old Testament people, they did great things. Read this Hebrews chapter 11 and if you read the whole chapter, they are great warriors. They did great things. But last two verses, if you read, he says they did not get their promise. They did not receive their promise. But he says, but God has kept something better than the Old Testament people for us, for the bride. So we are the bride. All the Old Testament people will be gathered together for the wedding feast. And they will be called the friend. The friend comes and say good things or listen good things and they go away. The bride stays 
with the bridegroom. And so when we studied last time, uh, Revelation chapter 14, verses 1 to 5, the bride will be with him in the Mount Zion, and wherever the Lamb goes, the bride goes. That means wherever the bride, grow, bride grow, goes, there the bridegroom will follow. And so we are blessed. We will be with him and uh, seven years as I said. The bride has freedom to go everywhere in the, uh, in the heaven. He says you will come in and go out. We can go to paradise. We can go to uh, worship in the temple. In the Revelation, we will be learning a little bit more in the following, uh, following half an hour. We will be priests and kings. Not for only a thousand years, but for eternity. And Jesus Christ came as a savior, as a prophet. If you remember, Moses said, send another prophet just like me that's deuteronomy deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 15 to 18 if you read and that the great prophet jesus christ came so he was a prophet now he's a priest high priest and when he'll come back he will come back as a king of kings and lord of lords and he has promised to his disciples you will be with me ruling and even book of Revelation, he said, you will be ruling with me in heaven. You will be sitting at the right hand. Uh, I will be sitting at the right hand of God and you will be sitting at my right hand. So that is the blessing given to the bride. And it says, we will be the priest. Jesus Christ is the high priest. So we will be there for eternity. And that uh, heaven where Jesus Christ went in the most holy place and kept his precious blood, that is not going to go vanish away. That will be there for eternity. He is the high, high priest for eternity. Book of Hebrews, you read from verse 7 and to 10 chapters, you will read, God has taken the high priest job from Levites. Jesus was not born in the Levite's family. He was born in the Judah's family. And Judah's family, the king comes. But the same family, Jesus Christ came and he became the high priest just like Melchizedek. So his priesthood for eternal priesthood. The Levite's priesthood is already over. Because if you read in a book of Jeremiah chapter 31 verses 31 to 34 God says I'm going to make a new covenant the old covenant is vanish away and is decaying and Jesus Christ took the blood and he said this is the covenant I'm making with my own blood so we are in the new covenant so the blood of Jesus Christ will be there for eternity and he will be the high priest for eternity he will be king for eternity. And so many people do not know. That's why they say in New Heaven or New Jerusalem, there was no temple found. That doesn't mean the temple disappeared. We will be learning that temple will be there forever. So what happens in Jerusalem? That will be the kingdom. That means just like, uh, let me give an example. New York City is a business center and uh, Washington is uh, like a king ruling from there. All the rules and regulation comes from there. But now we don't have kings, we have president. The point I'm making, the same way we will be in Jerusalem as the kings and we will be going to heaven as a priest. So the priestly work will be going on and the king's work will be going on but two different places the heaven will heaven will be there because if you read in a book of a book of uh, hebrews chapter 12 it says everything what you see it's going to vanish away or it's going to be shaken 
but the kingdom of God or the where the God lives is not going to be shaken. So where the God lives, that place called heaven and that heaven is for eternity. And that heaven is not going to move, not going to be shaken. And then he said, why am I going to make a new heaven, a new, new Jerusalem? That is a different part. That new Jerusalem, new heaven and uh, new earth is a dif different section in heaven. But that doesn't mean the heaven where the father lives, where the angel lives, that heaven is going to disappear. It's not. Because there will be the temple for eternity. And so we will be with God. And uh, as I said, when the marriage supper is over, in Revelation chapter 19, end of the tribulation, Jesus Christ comes, the word of God says comes with the saints, he comes with the holy angels, and he comes to rule on earth for 1000 years so that's the time the bride will come with him and the word of God says then we are going to rule if you read the Revelation chapter 20 there also says they will be what do you call the thrones are set and we will be sitting on the thrones and we will be judging and so we have the work to do in heaven as well as on earth. On earth we will be here for a thousand years. But most of the scholars they are thinking this earth after millennium is not going to be vanished away. We will be there for eternity. If that's the way it is then why Jesus Christ promised that I'm going to go to heaven I'm going to prepare a place for you, then I'm come, I'll come back and then you'll be with me in heaven for eternity. He did not say, I'll come back on earth and we will stay on earth for eternity. That's not Jesus' promise. So I take the word of Jesus, not somebody's words. Somebody's saying, this world is not going to vanish away. I'm not looking forward to living in this world for eternity. Yes. 1,000 years, after 1,000 years, we will be going to eternity. So we will be learning after eternity what? So, let me tell you, this is very exciting to me, to going to heaven where my heavenly father is. Going to heaven where my savior is. Going to heaven where the Holy Spirit is. Going to heaven where the billions and trillions and trillions of angels are there. Going to place where the holy uh, angels and the holiness reigns. No sin, no sickness, no disease, no death, nothing. That's the place we should be going. We should be excited about that place. Let me tell you. If you want to go to heaven, it's very simple. Some people are saying, what should I do to go to heaven? And many people will tell them, do this, do this, do this. And they are trying their best to do those things to go to heaven. But the word of God says, whatever your good deeds are the filthy rags in the sight of God. We cannot do anything to please God. Only Son of God, Jesus Christ, pleased the Father. He gave his life for mankind. We just have to believe. Just say, Lord Jesus, please come into my heart. Be my Lord. I believe that you came from heaven. You died for me. You rose again. You are a living God. Lord Jesus, please forgive all my sins. Wash me with your precious blood. Make me your child. And when you come, I want to go with you to heaven. Lord Jesus, please give me grace to follow you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you pray this prayer, that means you made the greatest decision in your life. There are people making great decision to buy a house or buy a boat or buy a car or get a married. But those decisions are great. 
but this is the greatest. You will not have a, any other chance than this to go into heaven. Without money, without spending any dime, you go to heaven. Now there are the people are saying, you want to go to atmosphere, we take you there, 500000 or $200,000 ticket. What are you going to see there? Nothing. They cannot take you to heaven. They cannot, you cannot see heaven. But Jesus Christ promised, and I believe in his promises. You know what you can do? You, if you gave your heart to the Lord, then you should have a burden for your family. The word of God says, if you, sa if you get saved, God will save your family. That's the promise. So you should work on your family, your friends and your friend circle. Tell them, I gave my life to Jesus Christ and I'm going to go to heaven. And some people say, don't you enjoy this smoking, drinking, womanizing, all this? I said, no. I got a better place and better things. I am not craving for anything because I got peace and joy in my heart. So let's pray for the unsaved people, your friends, your relatives. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for the people who are not saved. I pray that those people will come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And if they are sick, afflicted, and some of them may be cursing God, why this sickness and disease God gave it to me? God did not give it to them. The word of God says, enemy comes to kill, steal and destroy. So Lord Jesus, let them believe Jesus Christ, who gives us eternal life, who gives uh, eternal salvation. Bless them and let them come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Heal them, deliver them, and make them free. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you believe that you call upon Jesus, He has already touched you and healed you. I prayed for your healing. No matter what sickness and disease you are having, just try to do the right thing and things we, you are not able to do. You will be happy that you are completely free. God bless you. Amen. You've been listening to Jesus is the Answer with Pastor Peter of International Christian Fellowship in Northeast Philadelphia. If this program has been a blessing to you, please let Pastor Peter know. Write to Pastor Peter at Post Office Box 5033, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19111. Again, that's Pastor Peter, Box 5033, Philadelphia, PA, 19111. Pastor Peter and his prayer partners are taking your calls right now. The number is 215-342-3759. Again, that's 215-342-3759. You can also send email to icfprayerline at comcast.net. Every Sunday at 11 a.m., International Christian Fellowship has a worship service with communion and healing service. You can find more information at www.internationalchristianfellowship.org. This is a faith ministry. Your prayers and financial support are greatly appreciated. And please remember to tune in next time for Jesus is the Answer.